our scripture this morning. Uh, we are going to be, of course, remembering the Christmas story according to the Gospel of Luke, which we read part of last week, and we'll also add this uh, passage from Galatians to keep on our hearts and minds uh, this morning. And so I'm starting at verse 13 in the fifth chapter. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. This is the word of God for us this morning. Well, as we've been talking about the, the busyness and the, the bedlam of the holiday season, I was thinking back to, I think, the last time that I went out shopping on Black Friday. Uh, the ladies, Helen and the ladies, all have gone out. And so the guys, we thought, well, maybe we'll go and check out some deals and things. And uh, we went to Best Buy, which is a good guy store to go to, you know, look at the electronics. And uh, we had noticed some deals and we're checking things out. But we didn't really find anything that we wanted, except for I wanted a, a DVD. There was one movie that was kind of a newer movie, and it was $5 off. You know, that's like 25%, 30% off of a movie. So I was like, I'm going to get this uh, movie. And so I grab it and I, I went to the get in line uh, for the, to, pay, to check out, you know. And uh, during that season, Best Buy was doing just one line, basically. And then they would dismiss you as a cashier was open. So it was a really long line. It was the whole length of the front uh, of the store. And so as I stood there at the end of the line, I kind of looked at my DVD and I thought, is this really worth five bucks uh, waiting in this long line? And uh, I didn't say that out loud, but I was thinking it, and Helen's dad, Perk, was thinking the same thing, because Perk said, I'll give you five bucks if you don't make us wait in this line, you know? And so I was trying to remember if I got my five bucks from him or not. Knowing Perk, he offered it, and knowing me, I took it. Uh, so I probably did get my five bucks, and I did go get the, the movie later another time. But I, I was thinking about that as, as we look at our, our bedlam lives, the, the hecticness, the, everything going on this holiday season. Uh, this morning, I want to think about kind of, well, what is the cost of it? Why, why do we do this? Is it, is it worth the running around that we do? Is, is it really worth it? Uh, and want us to think about that uh, this morning. And so we've been talking about finding Bethlehem in the midst of Bedlam. And Bedlam is the, the crazy, uh, the confusing, the, the hectic, the busy lives that we have, uh, especially during the holiday seasons. You know, some of our lives are pretty busy already uh, with everything going on. And then you add all the Christmas stuff on top of it, and we just try and run faster. We just try and still do all those things and now add in the shopping and the wrapping and the activities and the concerts. And, and so we just keep on going. We, we just run, run faster. And, and that's the, the bedlam of life during the holiday season. But we also want to be looking uh, for the Bethlehem times this holiday season. And Bethlehem is those calm times, uh, the times that you feel God's peace and God's joy, uh, even in the midst of the bedlam going on around you. Bethlehem is those times that God speaks to us, uh, that God holds us uh, during the holiday season. And so we're going to be continuing to, to work on how can we kind of slow down and, and recognize those Bethlehem moments more often instead of just being caught in the bedlam that's going on around us. And as I said, we want to look at that passage from uh, Luke chapter 2 and continue to see how that might speak to us in the midst of everything that is going on. And if you remember Luke chapter 2, we have Mary and Joseph who go to Bethlehem in order to be counted in a census. Uh, they're told to go there, and so they go there, and um, Mary has her baby there, but there's no room in the inn, so they go out to a stable, and, and that's where baby Jesus is born. And they wrap him in cloth, and, and they lay him in a manger. And, and right after that, it takes us out to the countryside of Israel. Outside of Bethlehem, some shepherds are watching their flocks at night, and it says some angels appeared to them and, and told them the good news, uh, that Jesus was born, a Savior for them and for the world uh, in Bethlehem. And so as I was thinking about that scene, I want to invite you to kind of put yourself into the shoes of the shepherds, okay? So kind of imagine that you're out on the, the, the side of a hill. Uh, you might have just a little fire going, you know, for a little warmth and, and a little light, and you're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, an angel just appears before you, just kind of a flash of light, and, and a person is there. The angel didn't walk up to them, you know, just gradually getting there closer, so they kind of, oh, what, what's this about? It was just in an instant, a flash of light, and there's a person there. What would you do if that happened to you? What would you do if you're out in the middle of the dark and there's light and then there's a person there? Would anybody run? I'd be out of there. I'd be running the other direction. I think that's kind of our natural instinct is to run when we're scared, when we're surprised, when we're shocked. We want to go the other direction. And I think the shepherds just, uh, some of them probably just took off. Others probably were kind of getting ready to, but they're still kind of wondering what's going on. And, and I believe that's true because the, the, the angel says, first thing, do not be afraid. And so I see the angel saying, wait, don't run. You don't have to run away. Don't, don't be afraid. I have something good to tell you. Stay here. Come and let me share with you uh, a message of hope 
a message of peace uh, that is coming to you. And so, but I see them ready to go if they haven't already started running when the angel says, do not be afraid. And so I was connecting that to, to us in our lives today. And I started to wonder, you know, when we think about why we run through this life, why are we so busy and, and always doing things, going from one to another? Um, a lot of times we'll say, well, because there's a lot to do. Or we say, well, you know, I do all those things for my family. And, and those are kind of the easy answers, the, kind of the surface answers. But I wonder if we think a little bit deeper uh, to that question, if there's more to why we are so busy, if there's more to why we are running through this life. And I think a lot of it connects back to why the shepherds were running. I think we run through life a lot of times out of fear, that we're scared of something, that there's something there that we just, we, we don't want to address or we're, we're frightened of, and so we're going to run. We're going to keep busy. We're going to hurry in hopes to maybe ignore that fear or maybe in hopes to overcome that fear that is there. But I think if we take some time, and that's what I want us to do this morning, is, is to think about, okay, so what am I scared of? What, what is the fear that's causing me to run uh, in life and, and especially in this holiday season? And the book that I'm reading along with uh, our Advent study, uh, Addicted to Hurry, it talks about there's lots of reasons that we hurry. There's a lots of reasons that we run, and a lot of them are connected to fear. Uh, a lot of times we're scared of, of not getting everything done. We're scared because, you know, I want to get everything done. I want everyone to be able to do everything they want to do so that they can be happy, uh, so that they can enjoy things, and, and I don't want them to be mad at me if I don't let them do everything or if we don't have everything done. I'm scared of what people might think if I, I start to not get everything done. They're going to think poorly of me like I can't handle my life or I, I can't do all these things that, that I've said yes to. And so we're, really we're scared of what other people might think. Uh, in the midst of all the hurrying. And so we have to do it all. We have to do more because we want them to be happy. We want them to be satisfied. We want them to think we can handle things in life. And so sometimes that's a reason that we run. Uh, sometimes we're scared of, of not being uh, fulfilled at, at work. You know, work demands a lot of me, and so I want to do it really well, and I, I want to be the best, so I'm going to just put more time into it, more energy. I'm going to do more, do it faster, and, because a lot of times we take our value um, of who we are by our work you know, I am what I do uh, is kind of what we think, uh, although I don't believe God looks at things that way, uh, but we do. And so I need to do this better. I need to do more and be more productive. And so I'm going to hurry some more in there. I'm going to be faster at it. And, and we do it because we're scared to not be all we think we should be uh, at work. Sometimes we hurry in order to um, get the possessions that we want. You know, we want to have certain things in our life, certain uh, comforts and uh, toys and those kind of things. And so, you know, I've got to take that over time. I need to do more things so that we can have the things that we want. You know, it feels good to have the possessions you want, to be able to say yes to everything uh, that, that you want to have around your life. Uh, and so we hurry in order to get all those things. Uh, we think that it helps us uh, to get through life, to have all that stuff around us. And so we hurry, we run in order to get those things. And then there's lots of other reasons we run to get our share. You know, if I'm not there first, someone else will take it. You know, that was my spot. That was this, that. Uh, so we run to get our share. Um, we run to, I think, especially in the holiday time, to avoid things. That maybe there's a family situation uh, going on, or there's a, a family member that, and I really don't want to talk to them, or I don't want this situation to come up. So I'm going to run. I'm going to be busy and say, well, we can't really talk about that because I still have these things to do. And so we use that running to distract us because uh, we're scared of that conflict. We're scared of that situation. And so we, we distract from it. We kind of run away from it by being hurried and, and being busy. And so I think that God sees uh, us in the midst of all this busyness, and, and God sees the fears that, that we don't notice. Because we say again, well, I just I need to get those things done. But really, we're just distracting from something else that's going on. And, and we think if we, we keep busy, if we keep running, uh, we're going to take care of our fears. We'll be freed from our fears, you know, because we'll get everything done eventually on the checklist. Uh, we'll make everybody happy if we keep running. And we think that will free us, but it actually captures us. It actually grabs a hold of us, and it holds us back from really enjoying the Bethlehem, the peace and the joy that God wants for us. And so I want to encourage us to think uh, a little deeper this morning again of, of why are you running? What are you running from? What fear is it that you don't want to face? Uh, what are you trying to stay away from that, that keeps you busy? As I said, a lot of times we'll say, well, because I, I want my family to be happy and I'm doing things for them. But, but dig a little deeper. Think a little harder. Uh, for me, this past week especially, uh, it's been busy. I've been trying to live out my message of slow down, uh, but, but it's been busy. But I've had some time to, to think about what am I scared of that, that causes me to keep running. And there was two fears really that came to my mind. Um, the fear of not being a great pastor and, and the fear of not being a great dad during the holiday season. 
you know, I want my kids to enjoy Christmas and, and all the things of, of the holidays. Um, I don't want them to regret it as a time when mom and dad get busy and they get drugged everywhere, you know. And I don't want that to happen. So I want to be a great dad. I don't want to fail at that. So I'm trying to do as much as I can uh, to get them where they need to go and to still enjoy everything. But then I also want to be a great pastor and have our church really, you know, show the joy of Christmas and spread the wonder of it and, and do things well. And so I'm trying to do everything there that I can. And I, I just keep going and going. And, and I'm like, okay, so those are my two fears to fail in one of those areas. Um, now I've got to figure out what to do with that. But uh, that's what next week is for. And next week, we're going to look at some ways um, to spiritually wrestle with that, to, to face our fears. Uh, but the first thing we have to do is to recognize it. The first thing we have to do is take time to sit still long enough to say, okay, what am I really scared of? What, what is the fear that's driving me uh, to try and do all this stuff? And maybe all this unnecessary stuff. Why, why, am I, why do I feel compelled to run in these situations? And I believe God will speak to us if we sit still long enough and, and ask that question of him. He'll share with us, here's the reasons uh, that you are running. Here's the things uh, that are underneath. And, and I really believe that a lot of it is, is that distraction thing that we have certain fears that we don't want to address, uh, that we want to leave alone, uh, and, and we think that that will, will set us free from it, but it still holds on to us. And see, and that's what Paul is talking about here, is that at Christmas especially, Christ came to set us free, not to bind us or capture us, even in the busyness and everything else going on, but he came to set us free. Uh, but in our busyness, and, and Paul pointed out how we, we push other people down in our busyness. You know, as I'm trying to get my share, that means I'm taking some from somebody else, or I push them, I pull, I get their spot in line, uh, that we hurt each other during that busy time instead of healing each other, instead of helping each other. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be freed so that we have time to recognize the people that are around us uh, during the holiday season, and, and really to address our fears, to address the situations that might be difficult, and through that, become free in Christ and free to love and care for those that are around us. And he says, really, that the commandment is to, to love uh, your neighbor as yourself. And I thought, you know, first thing we have to do is love ourselves enough uh, to become healthy and, and not be running and, and be busy and have the chaos around us. Uh, we have to love ourselves enough to slow down, uh, to face our fears and to be freed from them. Uh, and then we will be able to better care for those that are around us and show our love uh, to them and show the joy of Christmas to those around us. And so that's my challenge to you this morning is, is to take some time to think of what, what is it that's scaring you, that's causing you to run uh, through this life? What fear is driving that? And, and try and grab a hold of what that is. And I said next week we'll work a little bit more to, to address that and how do we grow even in the midst of our fears because we all have them. You know, don't feel that, that you're unique uh, if you have it. We all have those fears um, that drive us. But how can we recognize them and then address them? And I also want to point out, uh, as we're running, and I've been talking about running as negative, uh, running isn't all negative, right? There are some good things about running, uh, like staying in shape. Uh, you run to stay in shape. Although I hate running in circles, you know, uh, for a workout. I don't want to go to the rec center and run around the track for 20 minutes. After about two minutes, I'm like, all right, am I, not, am I done? Is that enough? Uh, I, I, I hate just going in circles. I need a purpose as I run. And so if you put me on a basketball court or a soccer field, I'll run for two hours um, because I'm chasing a ball, and that gives me purpose uh, in my running. Uh, but running is, is good for our health. I mean, it's good for us to, to be able to do that. So not all running is bad or negative. Uh, the other thing I thought about was uh, last week we went down to Tennessee uh, for Thanksgiving, and um, Jameson and Hayden were excited to see their cousins. And as we pulled into the driveway at uh, Helen's brother's house, uh, Jameson threw open the door and he ran in to see his cousin I hasn't seen since summer. Are you going to show me what you did? Will you help me? All right, so he ran in. I'm his cousin Will, and he just jumped on him. And they were hugging like this, and he was so excited. All right, thank you. <laughs> and that's what he did. You can go sit down now. <laughs> But his cousin is six inches shorter than Jameson. <laughs> but his cousin is bigger than him. So his, but he was just, they were just hugging. But we run when we're excited, don't we? They were so excited to get down there and see their cousins. He had to run in there and give his cousin a hug. And, and God uh, causes us to run out of joy as well. And, and I saw that change in the shepherds too in, in the story as they were ready to run away from the angels, you know, because they were surprised, they were scared, they were frightened. But the angels said, hey, don't be afraid. I have good news. A savior has been born in Bethlehem. And then I see the, the shepherds take off running for Bethlehem. You see, first they were running out of fear, but then they were set free and they were running towards the savior. They were running toward the baby that was born in a manger. 
And so I believe God can, can free us from our fears and, and shift our running from a running of fear to a running to the Savior and running to grasp the gifts that God has for us uh, during the holiday season. To, to grasp that gift of freedom, uh, to care for others around us, to love people, uh, love our neighbors as ourselves. And so I pray that in the next couple of weeks we'll look at, all right, so what is the fear that I'm running from and how can I turn that? How can I be freed to run towards the Savior, to run towards Christ and not be busy in Bedlam, but be busy in Bethlehem, uh, helping people to, to feel the presence of God and for me to feel the presence as I, I'm serving them and caring for them. Uh, so I, I challenge you, I invite you to, to look at what are you running from and how can God use that then to turn it and allow you to run towards him and all that he has before you. Uh, I pray that God would open your eyes and help you dig beneath uh, the ways you've maybe answered that in the past and, and see more of what God wants to do in your life. And let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you uh, that you can turn our running from busyness, from uh, bedlam, from fear, and you can free us so that we can run towards you, that we can run towards your presence, uh, your joy and your peace uh, that can be given to us in this world. Uh, so, Lord, help us to, to have some time uh, to be still and to, to ask those questions and to hear your voice speak to us, that you might guide us to, to be whole and, and to be healed and to face the fears that we might have in our lives. Help us to know, Lord, that in all things, it's not about what we do, it's not about what we accomplish, but it's about who we are, that we are your children, and you have called us to run to you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this and pray you continue to speak it and work this in our hearts. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.